killed so a hero really uh, dying in confrontation and uh, far from what uh, Netanyahu claimed yesterday that uh, your leaders are uh, fleeing he wasn't fleeing Hi, good day and welcome to another episode of Unapologetic. Today I'm speaking to Dr. Azam Tamimi. Dr. Azam Tamimi is a political scientist um, and he's written extensively about Hamas. Dr. Azam, you're in specifically uh, to speak about uh, the death of Yahya Sinwar. Um, Firstly, what do you make about the way he was killed? Um, What do you think it symbolizes? Well, the information available to us uh, really create uh, an icon out of him. Uh, I don't think that any of... uh, former uh, Hamas leaders who were assassinated will probably be remembered uh, the way Sinwar will be remembered. Uh, Most probably the Israelis uh, didn't like uh, this end for him. They probably preferred to tell the world that he was hiding in a tunnel and taking shelter behind hostages, uh, using them as human shields. Uh, But somehow their uh, soldiers uh, took uh, pictures which soon found their way to um, on, the, on the internet and uh, the world saw a hero really uh, dying in confrontation and uh, far from what uh, Netanyahu claimed yesterday that uh, your leaders are uh, fleeing he wasn't fleeing I mean, you, you mentioned that uh, they, they took pictures. I mean, to a large extent, uh, the, the release of those pictures were choreographed by the Israelis themselves. Um, how much of a miscalculation is it by them? I mean, did they, uh, what, would be, what would be their blind spot to making such a big, grave mistake in terms of releasing all of these, uh, these images, which really, uh, like you said, uh, makes an icon out of him? Uh, what I understand is that the initial release uh, was without uh, approval from the superiors. Uh, I even heard that those soldiers might even be questioned or prosecuted for what they did. But then they reached the world, everybody saw them. And uh, the Israelis had to uh, try and make something out of it. So Netanyahu took to the podium and uh, gave a speech, which uh, uh, he tried to um, claim some sort of victory Uh, But it doesn't really matter what he thinks. Uh, What really matters is what the Palestinians and their supporters around the world will think uh, of what they saw in uh, in those images. Uh, Since he's since he's now passed on, um, Khalil Haya has obviously made a statement uh, on behalf of Hamas. He said that the hostages will not be released until all aggression against the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine stops. Um, until all the political prisoners in Israeli jails are released um, and until there's a complete withdrawal from Gaza. Uh, What do you think is going to occur in the war now? Well, only Allah knows what will happen tomorrow, but uh, Netanyahu has been playing a, a, a game, actually, since the beginning of the war. He pretended he wanted to reach a deal with Hamas, and every time a deal was about to be reached, he withdrew and I think since May Hamas realized that there wasn't going to be a deal Uh, and that's why they stopped taking seriously any talk of negotiations because they kept negotiating and the delegations were kept going to Cairo or meeting here or meeting there or in Doha and Netanyahu clearly didn't care about the hostages he still doesn't care about the hostages I think if he ever cared about the hostages, uh, he should have entered into a deal when an incident happened, if you remember, uh, weeks back, when uh, one of the Hamas guards whose children were killed by the Israelis uh, couldn't take it and fired on hostages, killing, I think, two of them and wounding one. Netanyahu should have realized if had he been really concerned about the hostages, that the more difficult he makes life for Hamas or for the people of Gaza, the less likely likely the hostages who are going to uh, come back uh, alive home. 
What do you think Israel's endgame is in all of this? Um, they are increasingly now bombing northern Gaza even more um, over the last week. Uh, they are starving the people of northern Gaza. Um, they are refusing to move uh, from uh, the Rafah corridor. Um, they are also uh, bombing southern Lebanon, uh, bombing Syria. What do you think is their endgame? What they're talking about now is something called the General's Plan. Uh, apparently, this is a plan to uh, evacuate certain areas, turn them into uh, buffer zones. So they're trying to do this now in North Gaza. They want to do it in South Lebanon. They're trying to do it across the borders with Syria as well. So this is developing and it, and it is uh, growing because apparently they realize that so long as they exist in this region, uh, their neighbors are not going to coexist peacefully with them simply because they are seen as occupiers, as invaders. So the proposal now is to just vacate those areas and keep monitoring them through intelligence as well as through fire, as they called it, intelligence and fire. Uh, now, is this likely to work? I think it's um, very unlikely to work. Um, if you look at uh, other people's experiences with the struggle against colonialism, colonialism always gets defeated in the end. They have no chance. They have no hope. Not only that, this issue is not a war with the Palestinians or with the Lebanese. Increasingly, this is becoming a humanitarian, a global humanitarian concern. Israel is seen as the reincarnation of the Nazis in Europe. They're, they're doing exactly what the Nazis did in Europe. And this is horrifying the world. And I think uh, in time, more and more people will see Zionism, which is the ideology of this state and the ideology uh, of uh, Netanyahu and the people who are uh, uh, behind him is a threat to humanity. Uh, do you think uh, this now is still going to be the war is still going to be extended and involve Iran? Um, do you think what do you think is likely to occur with that? That very much depends on uh, the Israeli promised retaliation. What sort of retaliation, if it ever occurs, and what sort of targets uh, they're likely to hit? Of course, it can expand. It can get out of control, and I think Netanyahu doesn't care. Uh, he doesn't care simply because he is concerned about his own political future and about his image. He is now trying to create an image of uh, him being the modern King David of the Israelites. And it seems uh, he is crazy enough to do what it takes for this to happen. Um, in the Western media, quite soon after Sinwar's uh, killing, um, there were reports that maybe now the, the war will end. Um, the Western media has been wrong about many things uh, this, this last year. Um, what's, what are they misreading again regarding that? I think they're buying the Israeli um, narrative that Hamas is finished. Even if Hamas is weakened or if Hamas is finished, the Palestinian cause isn't over. And uh, assuming they will impose some sort of a new order uh, in Gaza, things will in time erupt again. Uh, and I think the uh, Western journalists don't make an effort to think much uh, about precedents, about previous experiences, um, which are there in the libraries. People can read about them, what happened in Vietnam, what happened in Algeria, what happened in Afghanistan, in various parts of Asia, Africa, Latin America. And uh, they just write on the basis of what might be wishful thinking that with the support of the West, uh, Israel will be able to just impose itself uh, on everybody else. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they're also kind of misreading Netanyahu himself, who wants to continue the war. Of course. Uh, well, see, maybe Netanyahu is not a likable person as far as they are concerned. I mean, even to the uh, Democratic Party in the United States of America. Uh, but it's a complex issue because Israel is the Western project, is the project of the Western civilization. 
is probably the last colonial project on the face of the earth, last colonial settler project. And th there's no other way to explain why the Americans say something and do another. Uh, they ask Netanyahu to stop the war, to allow food to come in, allow medicine, allow people uh, a respite, but at the same time they keep supplying him with lethal weapons to continue to kill the Palestinians and now the Lebanese. Uh, and that is simply because they are worried about their own daughter or their own son, spoiled son called Israel, which they created and they want to see uh, continue to uh, be alive and kicking. What do you think will happen with Hamas now? Um, who do you think will take over? Who do you think will uh, be the head of their political bureau? Um, what do you understand about their decision-making uh, processes? How will they be impacted? I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I cannot speculate because the last time when Haniya was assassinated, I was one of many people who thought that probably Khalid Mishal would take over. Um, but then the Shura Council, when it met, um, decided, including Khalid Mishal himself, that uh, Sinwar was probably... Uh, the best choice in this particular uh, critical moment. Now, what they'll do now, I don't know. Um, I expect that maybe the successor will be someone from the diaspora. Maybe from Gaza, but from the diaspora. Uh, it probably take a few days for uh, their decision to uh, be made. Um, do you agree with Hamas's position, what the Khalid, what the Khalid al-Haya said, um, where they will not release the hostages, they will continue holding on to them until Israel withdraws from Gaza, until all the Palestinian prisoners are released, and until all aggression against Palestinians uh, stops? It's not for me to agree or disagree, but that's the position of the movement. The movement, uh, from day number one, wanted to, to have a deal, to uh, enter into proper negotiations. The Israelis have refused. Hamas even accepted the proposal made by Biden himself. Netanyahu rejected it. Uh, I don't think after all these, this war, this destruction, this killing and mayhem, Hamas will just deliver uh, the hostages uh, for nothing. Uh, so what I can see is that they're uh, adhering to their position. How long do you think this will go on for, the war? Again, that's something it's difficult to really speculate about. When the war started uh, early October last year, we thought it was going to last a few days, maybe a few weeks. Nobody expected it to last more than a year. It's already more than a year now. Now, it is now becoming a war of attrition. It's becoming a guerrilla warfare. And this is something the Palestinians can sustain for for uh, for a long time, uh, but it's really difficult to tell. Um, a, few, a few months back, uh, the Israelis also assassinated Ismail Haniya. Um, they've obviously been trying to kill uh, uh, Yahya Sinwar. It wasn't an assassination as such. It was he was killed um, in fighting. Um, when Ismail Haniya was assassinated, uh, was that surprising to you? Of course, it was surprising, it was shocking, because you don't expect this to happen in a country hosting him as a guest of state. Um, apparently, the assassination of Ismail Haniya exposed a major security failure in Iran. Until now, we don't know exactly what happened. There have been uh, a few uh, stories. Uh, probably the most credible thus far is that this was a projectile, some sort of a rocket fired from nearby. And for this to happen in an area that is under the control of the uh, Revolutionary Guards uh, to uh, someone in the position of Ismail Haniya, uh, that, that, that was really shocking. Um, what do you think was behind it? I mean, since then, we've seen that there's been the pager attack against Hezbollah. Um, Nas uh, Nas Hassan Nasrallah has also been killed. Um, do you think that the, the plan here is just continuous provocation of uh, of Palestinians and Iran? Um, or are they specifically targeting certain individuals because they're trying to uh, decide who they get to negotiate with? You mean the Israelis? The Israelis, yes. I don't know if they have a plan. I think... 
they hunt for opportunities. If they see an if they see, if they see an opportunity, they seize it. They seize upon it. That, that's what happened. And I I suspect that they had uh, insiders in Iran who arranged for them uh, access, and they managed to uh, assassinate Haniyeh. Now, in the case of Hezbollah, there has also been a major security failure. And I think, once again, Iran is a factor here because one of the uh, stories we heard is that the uh, pagers and um, uh, Tokiwokis deal was arranged by an Iranian. Now, who is that Iranian and how, how come that... Uh, he arranged that deal with a company set up by the Israelis in the first place. Um, so I think now even Hezbollah people know, especially after the assassination of their uh, top leader, that uh, they, they had been infiltrated. Uh, Iran is infiltrated. Hezbollah was infiltrated. What do you think Israel's end game? We've spoken about the general's plan, um, but which is mainly about annexing North Gaza. Specifically, we're talking about Gaza and not the other elements of the general's plan. But how do you think Israel in the long term now tries to manage and secure Gaza, given that they have uh, flattened it and created such a massive humanitarian disaster? I don't know exactly what they're thinking about now. Of course, uh, since the 7th of October, we heard all sorts of plans. Uh, one of the plans was to depopulate Gaza altogether and bring back the settlers. And some of the settlers actually were preparing themselves to go there and people were considering buying land in Gaza. Um, th that is from the Israelis, assuming that they will reoccupy the entire uh, strip. Um, there, were, there, were, there was talk about bringing back the Palestinian Authority from Ramallah as well. None of this worked simply because the population in Gaza uh, refused to accept any of these plans. The resistance is not over. Has, the movement hasn't been crushed. Um, uh, and, and therefore, uh, all they do now is just bomb and bomb and kill and kill continuously, use uh, starvation as a weapon, uh, spare no one at all, uh, in the hope that probably this will uh, force the population to uh, kneel down. This hasn't happened. Uh, in terms of the U.S. elections, um, there's a likelihood that Donald Trump uh, will come into office. Uh, will that make things even worse, in your view? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I'm not really sure that there is a difference between the Republicans and the Democrats when it comes to uh, the issue of Palestine. Probably uh, Trump uh, tells us what he thinks, unlike the others who say something and do something else. So f with Trump, you will know what what you're likely to to see tomorrow morning. Um, this project, the Zionist project in Palestine, was inherited by the Americans from the British. And the Americans believe uh, it is uh, their, their, their own interests that uh, they're serving or, uh, or defending. But the world is changing, and America itself is likely to change. I mean, we saw young students, many people, uh, especially the young age, uh, um, moving side for, for a change, trying to learn more about the conflict, about its history, uh, voicing support for the Palestinians. With the passage of time, the number will increase and the impact will, uh, will also be uh, magnified. And this is what happened uh, during Vietnam. And that's why on the 7th of October, uh, some American writers likened what happened on the 7th of October with what happened in Vietnam in 1968, with what is called the, as the Tet Offensive. Although the Tet Offensive, which lasted from February until August 1968, uh, was a failure in, terms, in, in military terms, uh, however, it started a, a, a movement that triggered political change in favor of the Vietnamese, and eventually the Americans left. Uh, so some people can see a parallel here. Um, I think eventually uh, the Zionist project has no future in Palestine. Uh, how it will come to an end, I don't know. Maybe it will come to an end the way the Vietnamese uh, conflict came to an end. 
Um, what do you think the the lasting legacy of Yahya Sinwar will be? I think if you look, he, only yes, it, it is less. It is probably 24 hours now since we knew of his uh, death, and look at the social media. He he's become an icon. He's be, he's become uh, a model, and uh, today, this morning, a Friday, this Friday morning, uh, three Jordanian young men crossed the uh, borders and uh, clashed with the Israelis. Two of them were martyred. And I, I think this is going to get galvanize thousands of people around the world. This is going to be his legacy. I mean, social media is, is uh, th- that is true. And I've seen similar, similar things on social media, but it also is an echo chamber. Um, on the other side, uh, Time magazine released uh, an image with an X of Yahya Sinwar's images on, on the front page. And, and there's an X over it. And the only other people that they've done that with in history is, is Hitler. Uh, Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, um, and 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 th- these figures. Um, so, what does it mean in terms of also polarization, uh, and what is this war meant, in fact, in terms of polarization between East and West? Well, Time Magazine is not a major of public opinion anymore. Not Time Magazine, not the New York Times, not the Washington Post, not the BBC. None of these uh, traditional uh, media uh, outlets. Uh, that are really uh, under pressure to uh, toe the line. Um, I, I think the social media is more representative to some extent of where public opinion is heading. Um, and it doesn't matter what uh, Time magazine publishes on its uh, front page. It is still uh, a mouthpiece for imperialism. That's what it is. Um, and what they consider to be a terrorist uh, in the eyes of millions around the world uh, is going to be a hero. Probably they would have done something similar uh, to Nelson Mandela had he not succeeded in bringing about the end of uh, apartheid in South Africa and uh, becoming uh, the president of the country. Do you think that the, the Palestinian cause now is is in a, in a healthier position than it was on October 6, 2023? Oh, definitely. There is no question about it. I think before the 7th of October, many people, including many Palestinians, thought the cause was being killed, was being suffocated. Um, Saudis were preparing for um, uh, a peace deal or a peace treaty with the Israelis, full normalization of relations. Uh, and uh, people were no longer talking about Palestine, about Gaza. Which, is, which was still under siege for 16, 17 years. Uh, now look at the Palestinian cause. Despite the pain, despite the destruction, uh, probably future generations will uh, think uh, in hindsight that this was a price worth paying in order to revive the cause. How else do you revive a cause that everybody wants to kill? Uh, what would happen? I mean, that's that, that's 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 one uh, side of the coin, and I hear the argument. But at the same time, there's been such a massive human uh, toll created by Israel. Um, how does a nation recover from that toll? Well, nations recover. I mean, uh, how many millions did the Americans kill in Korea first, and then in Vietnam? How many did the French kill in Algeria? Uh, an Algerian friend of mine told me that uh, since the Algerian rebellion or the Algerian revolution started against the French, it is estimated that 15 million Algerians were killed. Um, so you see, uh, people are stunned by the horrific pictures that we uh, receive uh, on daily basis, on hourly basis. Uh, during the Vietnam cause, you had only uh, a few minutes in a, in a w- once a day in a bulletin about what the Americans were doing to the Vietnamese, burning them with napalm and with, the, uh, I don't know what, what other weapons they were uh, using uh, to exterminate them, actually. They were exterminating them. Uh, so yes, it's horrific, it's painful, but I don't think that the Palestinians are paying a much higher price than that paid by people who struggled for their dignity and for their freedom. Dr. Zamtami, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.